Hello, hello, welcome to the brand new video about Akiba Rubinstein. Today is gonna be his first tournament ever played in his life. And it's the third All-Russian Masters tournament. Uh, and it took place in Kiev uh, in 1903. And Polish nobleman Count Platter was um, president of the Kiev Chess Society. And he also was the main patron of this tournament. So some rewards appeared and that brought um, some uh, famous names there. So um, what we know also about conditions that it was scheduled for uh, five days a week uh, with the Thursday and Sundays excluded. But more interesting is that the games were held from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, so quite late. The time control was uh, two hours for 30 uh, moves and one hour for another 15 moves. And uh, let me show you the final standings. Here we go. Uh, so uh, Mikhail Chigorin won that tournament. He was a superstar of, of that tournament. He was 53 years old at the time and he, he just won it. Uh, 15 out of 18 points, so um, very good score. And he won 500 rubles. Uh, Rubinstein was fifth, so quite decent score for the first tournament. And, um, and he got 125 uh, rubles. So um, that's about tournament. And let me introduce you the opponent of Akiba Rubinstein. And I'm not gonna go for the, you know, chronological order. Um, I start from the big names. So um, the first one gonna be, yes, you guessed correctly, Mikhail Chigorin. And that's why, because he was a legend. Um, and I want you to see how Rubinstein, at the beginning of his career, on his first tournament, um, try to deal with um, the superstar. Um, about Chigorin, just a couple of notes. He was a very, very strong um, chess player. Um, he started when he was 24 years old, but very fast he became better than his um, uh, chess teacher, uh, who also played in this tournament, but that's la one of the last tournaments, so he didn't do um, very well, Emmanuel Schiffers. And um, uh, for many years, uh, Schiffers was um, number two in uh, Russia because his student, uh, Mikhail Chigorin, um, just was better. And um, uh, some why, why uh, we think uh, Chigorin was uh, so good. OK, his first international tournament was Berlin 1881, and he was the third behind Johannes Zuckertort and Joseph Henry Blackburn. And it was the even included 17 master competitors. So quite strong one. Yeah. And he was third. And another uh, tournament was the famous great London tournament of 1883. And Chigorin was fourth there. Uh, he was just behind Zuckertort the former um, world champion Wilhelm uh, Steinitz and Blackburn. So uh, 14 competitors in this double round robin even included practically all of the best chess players in the world. And he was fourth over there. That, that's strong. Yeah. Next tournament, 1889. And he was first in the very strong tournament in New York. And once he achieved that, he just uh, challenged um, the world champion Steinitz for a match. And, um, and it, at the same year, 1889, uh, he played um, uh, against uh, Steinitz for the world champion title. Uh, but he lost 10 and a half to six and a half. Uh, and he got another chance, another uh, challenge in uh, 1892. And he lost also, but uh, not narrowly uh, 12, 12 and a half to 10 and a half. OK, so uh, he almost got the world champion. But yeah, he just um, lost that. 
and okay warm welcome for Mikhail Chigorin and now as you see we have his writing um, chess metrics shows that in um, September of 1903 he was ranked fifth in the world he was also 53 years old and his rating was 2734 and um, Akiba Rubinstein um, I still have to estimate and I have no idea how to do that because uh, it's already uh, I, I checked the rankings in chess metrics all of these players in these tournaments and just next year some of them were already 2500 or 2600 even um, but I think um, at the beginning of this tournament because that was the first tournament for a couple of players uh, I, I will stick with um, 2400 around 2400 for Rubinstein that's um, that will also show the difference of, of the games but that's estimation and feel free to disagree of course in the comment section uh, and yeah that's being said uh, let's start the game Chigorin open with e4 and we have e6 uh, by Rubinstein and now um, very standard move for Chigorin and that's Chigorin variation in French defense um, Chigorin is known um, because several openings um, are named after him and the two most important being uh, Chigorin variation of the Rui Lopez and the Chigorin defense in the Queen's Gambit um, so that's for the extra knowledge so he was um, he tried to you know find some new ways of playing and this was a uh, patent of Chigorin and um, in this um, uh, moment Rubinstein an answered a knight c6 we have f4 knight d4 early attack on the um, queen placed on um, e2 we have queen d3 attacking the knight c5 defending knight f3 pressure and knight c6 going back and here uh, Chigorin go queen to e2 and he going back to the main line of the opening which yeah he, he definitely know um, the ideas all the ideas you know and nuances of his opening so he decided to uh, put the queen to the place uh, where it belongs we have um, bishop on e7 we have knight c3 d5 d3 knight f6 g3 a6 bishop on g2 and then we have castle and castle bishop d7 knight e5 attacking that uh, white square bishop and here Rubinstein played d4 we have knight d7 knight d7 and only now knight on d1 e5 by Rubinstein trying to strengthen the center king h1 and the idea of course is um, attack on the g file queen c7 and now it's quite interesting move which proves that Chigorin really really understand that position bishop on h3 and you will see the idea and now this is the maybe last chance to have equal game for Rubinstein he should um, you know attack on the on the queen side so b5 and then c4 and attacking on the on the this uh, pawn chain structure would be the best and would give him some chances um, but he decided to play rook a to d8 and he just uh, I think he didn't plan well also playing against so strong uh, opponent uh, is uh, 
it's also some stressful. Maybe he tried to do something with his queen, so he defended the, the, the knight. That was his idea, I'm not sure. Um, but in this uh, moment, Chigorin just played D b3. And b3 uh, kind of uh, preventing black of, of making that this attack. I mean, at least it's, it's a little bit more difficult. We have bishop on d6 strengthening and trying to get some attack here but uh, Chigorin don't let that to happen so he play f5 so now we're gonna have quite long uh, uh, pawn chain and not much space for a black but let's see how um, it's um, how it's happening in the game uh, we have f6 so uh, Rubinstein decided to have the base of his pawn chain um, on f6 we have a bishop on g4 and this is also um, showing the rest of the plan for uh, Chigorin not not yet but um, uh, look at this we have b bf uh, b5 uh, by uh, Rubinstein and now we have bishop h5 so this bishop make quite a moves you know it's the opening uh okay it's the end of the opening already but uh, one two three four moves to get on h5 and here um the bishop preventing black from you know escaping uh so now um this king cannot you know escape somewhere um somewhere on the queen side so um this is really strong move we have rook b8, so changing the plans and trying to attack here. We have g4, attack is coming. Bishop e7, trying to prevent. h4, of course, and rook f on c8. Uh, so Rubinstein tried to make some, you know, counterplay on these um, lines, but, uh, but see, she got in already started to attack so we have g5 and um, this is a very very difficult position for black already uh, white just stand much better and uh, the only chance for black would be probably play um, c4 trying to attack and uh, after rook g1 as planned c on captures on d3 c captures on d3 knight b4 trying to find some sorry about that uh trying to uh, find some counterplay here uh maybe bring the heavy pieces here uh bishop d2 uh queen b6 and there are some maybe not chances but um, can try to defend that that game still yeah but somehow Rubinstein play knight on d8 and now his position is really really difficult uh, Chigorin started from preventing this, this c4 so he plays c4 himself uh, stopping any possible counter attack on the queen side uh, and probably this was last chance when where Rubinstein could try to try to open the, the center and then the queen side um, maybe knight c3 knight c6 um, bishop on e3 uh, and knight d4 and and at least this this knight would i don't know would do something queen f2 uh, knight b6 and uh, preventing the the white on playing on on d5 and maybe black at least could have some chances on the queen side however in this position uh very passive knight on f8 and um, as you see chigorin plays and rubinstein don't try to have any uh, counterplay very difficult position rook g1 knight b7 knight f2 knight d6 so trying to remaneuver this um, this knight but uh, we have knight g4 king h8 uh, getting away from the g file we have now the attacks 
starts. You can actually try to um, pause the video and and try to find the attack. Like, um, let's, let's make it. Uh, okay, now we have um, on the black side, on the white side, so we can uh, we can try to play uh, as a Chigorin and try to find um, the attack. Mm, how you would uh, finish that game? Well, I enjoy my cup of tea. <sighs> okay, ready? So in this position, Chigorin play G takes on F6. We have G on F6, Knight H6, and now there is nothing black can do. Uh, the checkmate is coming, and if you want to prevent it by move like this, uh, it also gives you nothing. We have uh, queen on g4, and the checkmate is coming here. So that would be rook on g8, maybe, and then it's checkmate on g8. So that's not the way uh, to play. Uh, in this position, Rubinstein uh, tried to sacrifice the knight, but definitely it gives you nothing. It gives him nothing because f um, takes on g6, and uh, bishop tried to defend of f8, but that cuts the uh, rooks from the from defending of of the of the king. So white just play knight f7 and that's actually forced checkmate um, so rubinstein play as a gentleman and you know just let uh, chigorin to checkmate him uh, we have knight on f7 uh, g on f7 and in this position uh, rubinstein didn't resign so really really uh, very high standard as a gentleman playing with the legend absolutely superstar of this tournament he led himself to be checkmate on g8 so yes that's the final position how it looked like from rubinstein side so um, that was not uh, any of the first game, that was one of the last games, but I decided to show you that as a first game, because this shows how much work Rubinstein still need to uh, put um, to, to be the one of the best players in the world. And yeah, as always, uh, this study is available uh, in Leeches, so uh, feel free to visit Leeches and check that game. It's a very interesting game. There are some, some possibilities, some extra lines I didn't show. And, um, and you can find the link in the description. And of course, as always, um, feel free to like if you like this video. So press like button. If you don't like, press on like and um, yeah, leave the comment. Um, I'm reading all the comments. I'm very interested what I can improve and what you like um, in, in my um, videos. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.